Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This is not sponsored and it's not a review, but the lovely people over at iFootage sent us their new Anglerfish LED light for Peter to have a play around with and use. Um, so yeah, not sponsored, not a review, but this is just Peter's first time using it. Um, they also sent us a few modifiers. So Peter's is gonna go through different looks he can get with it. Um, and yeah, this is gonna be his first impression of his first use with it. So today I'm going to shoot with LED lights and it's something I haven't done before. I've normally shot with HMIs or really small little LED lights. We've got a much more powerful LED light that we're running today. And I'm just going to show you the different modifiers and different ways I can use it. Um, one of the downsides with it is very bright and models can find it too bright in their eyes. The other thing is when we're working with a sunlight studio or a daylight studio, sorry, uh, if the sun goes up and down, it affects the ambient light and changes our shadows of how bright or how dark they are. But I just try and balance with what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to run through uh, all the different types of settings I can do to, and the, type, the beautiful lights I can do. And one of my favorite things is this in a mirrorless and then shooting, especially shooting tethered, pretty much what I see with my eyes will be what I see on the screen Whereas flash, what you see with your eyes is not what you see on the screen. So I can balance it better. The first look I'm going to do is the look that was used a lot by GQ. Unfortunately, Terry Richardson put his name to it, but it's a style that's been around for a long time and he doesn't own it. Um, basically, can you line and as close to the wall as possible, just about there. So what this look is going to give me is cool. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. Is a nice clean, contrasty shot with a little drop shadow off to the side of where if my camera's on this side, the drop shadow will be there. If my camera's on there, the drop shadow will be there. Um, and because the light's slightly above, it's just gonna drop under a chin, which gives that beautiful cut off. If, is that too bright or is it just doable? It, I'm, it's, I think it's just doable. It's All right. really bright. So what I can do is if I come across a fraction, I can just extend the shadow out. Cool. Cool. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. And this is used a lot for like cover shots. It leaves nice area for text to go. Next thing is if I just lift it up slightly higher and say my client doesn't want the shadow, if I come directly under the light and Beck doesn't put her hands out like that, you'll see there's a slight shadow under her arms. But while they're dropped down. Cool, that's really pretty. Oh, that's stunning, stunning, stunning. That's really pretty. Cool, beautiful, beautiful. There, 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 gorgeous, gorgeous. And that's just going to give us a beautiful, clean, high key look. And you'll see it's nice. You'll see the beautiful contrast we're getting because it's a small light form. It's going to give us more contrast. The next thing we can do to this is because it does, it is a little bit hard on the model's eyes is we can now soften this off. So I'm going to just pull this back a little bit and then drop a diffuser in front of it. And what this will do, it'll take the contrast off the light because it's going to now diffuse this light and the size of the circle that's left on this scrim will be the size that the light that's going to be hitting Beck is. It's also going to soften shadows. So what you'll be able to see now is the closer I bring the light to the scrim, the smaller and the more contrasty light's going to be. As I bring it out, it will spread it and soften the shadow. So I can just play with this a little bit. This is also much softer on uh, Beck's face and on her eyes. This is nowhere near as hard. And I've just come one third of a stop difference with my camera to get the same blown out background. So you'll see that is the bare bulb and then that scrim. See how much the contrast is pulled out? You'll see the walls hardly change, but see, look at the softness it's in on back. So what I might do now is just bring her up a little bit. Let's go for a nice up away shot. So sneak out a little bit. I'm just, and I can use my eyes now and see the glow. There's a really nice pretty there. It's really pretty there. That's really pretty, stunning. That's really pretty, cool, beautiful. It's really stunning, stunning, cool. 
beautiful. And you'll see, you'll see how pretty and soft this is. See how soft off the nose shadow is. So it's not leaving a really nasty, harsh nose shadow. It's just giving this beautiful softness through the picture. So the next thing I'm going to do is come back to the contrasty light. So now what I'm doing now is setting up for a clamshell style light. So I'm bouncing the light off the white board into Beck. Now, I can even tell from here, it's a little bit Blair Witch. So if I lift it a bit higher, which turns down the bottom, but allows more light from the top to hit her. I wanna try and get that sunlight type of shadow under her chin. So I don't want it directly under her chin. I'm trying to set up a nice bounce to kill the shadow under her chin, but I wanna angle you, that's it. It's like a sunlight style of shadow that's sitting in under her chin. Cool, that's really pretty. That's really pretty, stunning. Cool, beautiful, beautiful, stunning, stunning. It's quite pretty. So now you'll see it's this beautiful like sunlight type of drop shadow. Normally the sun's up high and creates that nice cross shadow under the chin and just gives a really nice soft look. You've got Wednesday eyes. Wednesday. I have nearly finished this yet. Sure. Yeah, but her, your eyes are like her eyes. I did notice that a lot watching the series. Oh. Okay, so, so far I've shown you a bare bulb straight onto her, then through a scrim, so softening it off, using it as a bounce light and getting this beautiful look. All right, so the next thing I've dropped on this Really cool, it's a parabolic softbox, even though we can't move our light in and out. I think they've tuned it really, really well. Oh, cool, that's really pretty, that's really pretty. The second we uh, put something like a diffuser or softbox or something on this, you'll see it makes it much easier on you, doesn't it? It doesn't affect you as much. I haven't changed my exposure at all. I'm fraction darker, but you'll see now we've got this cut under her chin, which is definitely shaping her face more to the shape Beck likes. So a light from above will always give more shape in a rounder type face. If someone has a very long face, it's best, if anything, get a bounce board up underneath, which will stop the elongation of their face. That's really pretty, that's really pretty. Stunning, stunning, that's stunning, cool. Beautiful, beautiful, there, there, cool. Stunning, nice, beautiful. Yeah, these are really nice headshots and Beck will like her face in that. I'm gonna come back a fraction, turn it up a tiny bit more. So this dress was designed to make you look skinnier from a distance. When they got up close to you, that's so you're not skinny. But you'll see how this dress, because the shape of it, you're instantly just seeing the black, you're not so much seeing. And that's where I should be shooting this dress because that's what's been made. This or the full length of it. I'll just do a couple more on this. Cool, beautiful, beautiful. That's really pretty. Cool, cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to shoot her a little bit longer. So I'm going to come, you can stay where you are, I think. I'm, and if I come back to here, just to shoot it at the length of the dress, so I get the full length of the dress in. It's really pretty there, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So with this, it's really nice, but we have, we've got a bit of a fall off. So if you look at up on her arms there to her legs. So I wanna get a little bit more kick back up in here. So I'm just gonna drop it in my bounce board and I'm gonna tilt the light down on it. So I need this to be below the height I'm shooting. Beautiful. Still a fraction dark, but I'm really liking it. In fact, that's, that's feeling natural. I'll actually really, really like that to the point. I'm just gonna take one or two more of that because it's really pretty. That's cool, that's really pretty, that's really pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. Just gonna see what I've got there. Yeah, that's much nicer. I'm really liking that. So still just using this LED, I've got her beautifully lit. That's popping off really nice. And yeah, the catch light's really cool too. So I'm liking that. It's the windows in the background, not that there's much light out there now. It's got quite cloudy. Okay, next thing. I'm just gonna reshape this light back into 
Beck's face. What I'm gonna do is more aimed for a headshot. So I wanna get this light at about the height that I wanna shoot, a really nice headshot. So I'm gonna go a fraction longer than a headshot only because Beck's not gonna complain about skinny dress. It's cool, beautiful, beautiful. That's really pretty there, cool, cool, cool. That's what we've got now, and you'll see the light on the background, everything. So there's one more thing I'm gonna just do. So with the bubble, it's sort of like a shoot through translucent, but with the shape of it, we could put it next to colored walls and bounce the feeling of the room back into the rest of the room. So if there was a yellow wall in the house, we could put it near the yellow wall, it would bounce some of that yellow light as what would happen in natural light. Uh, let's see how horrible it is on Beck. Is that too bright? Handle. You can handle it. Cool, that's really pretty. I don't think I've ever used... Oh, that's pretty. Very clean, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like it? Yes. Yes. Jump back in and let's get... It's very, very pretty light. I've never used one of these on a, a person before. I think I could even nearly drop a scrim behind a mount even more, but this is such a nice, beautiful, beautiful. Cool, cool, that's really nice. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm getting flares. That's what's happening. Cool, they're nice, nice, that's really pretty. That's really pretty. Cool, I like that lot. It's a very pretty light. I think this might be Beck's new favourite light because it gives you cut under the cheek and a very soft... Yeah, I do like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a bit of lens flare there. So it. it's really... Do you like the lens flare? I like the lens flare. All right, that's fine. Let's grab a little I'm bit more. I'm president of the camera club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what I'm, what I'm getting is a little bit of a flare in this lens. And this lens does tend to flare quite easily. It's an antique lens. So if I come back a little bit, I should be able to pull that, I can just see the flare in there now, which is just giving so much more detail. Cool, that's really pretty. Stunning, stunning. So this is a look, and I can play around with this in shot, but look at the detail in the blacks I've got here. And that's because of the lens flare. And I could easily just move my black point. In fact, let's quickly do it here. So I could all, you can dehaze, will just pop pull that flare off, or do you like it with it? I think I like it. Or I can pull the blacks down a little bit and keep the flare and just make my blacks a little bit blacker. Mm. Mm? Like that? Mm. That's actually really pretty. Mm. It's only one thing wrong with this picture. I know you like the colours. All right, so just by pulling the blacks down and making it black and white, there's seriously nothing more I need to do with this in raw. I like the sparkles. The sparkles, all right, well, you can, you can go in the sparkle. I'll do a few at this. That's really cool. That's really pretty, that's really pretty. Stunning, stunning. Do you want to take a step back? Another one? I'm just gonna see if I can shoot you full length without bringing anything in, just using the ball. That's really pretty, that's really cool. Stunning, stunning. I'm actually really happy with that. I've got her lit. There's a little bit of fall off down towards the bottom, but most of my clients would be extremely happy with that. One final, I know I'm gonna keep doing this. One final thing, come right in. Stop there, now come off to one side. Ooh. But turn back into the light a little bit, just a little bit, that's cool. Cool, that's really pretty. Stunning, stunning. So with this, I've just got some fall off happening. You'll see a beautiful fall off on one side. I could also bring a cutter in there too, but one last thing. <laughs> big, shoe, big shoes to this. <laughs> just one more thing. Because I've never used this on people before, I'm learning this myself. So what I've done, I've dropped, here we go. By dropping that bit of foam and using the ball, just get the whole dress in with that little bit of bounce off that foam board. Stunning, cool, cool. Really work this hero shot. Nice there, nice. You've got a couple of loops. Don't hate them that side, that's it. 
Oh, that's beautiful. There, there, there. Stunning, stunning. Stunning, stunning. Beautiful. Now coming closer. And closer. Just there. Sparkles. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. I reckon we got it. Is that really nice light? Dopey eyes though. Yeah, can you go to another one, please? That's even better. <laughs> Back after a big night. That's nice. That is nice. That's nice. That's nice. nice. So we hope you guys enjoyed that. I will drop a link in the description of where you can pick up your own Anglerfish LED light from. And Peter is really happy with this, so we'll probably be seeing this a lot more in our future videos. And if you want to check out some other stuff, I'll put it around my head now.